Continuing from the previous video, we're going to create a custom field of view for the pilots. And in this video, I'm going to show two ways to go about it. The first way is not a good way. The second is the what I would suggest. So keep that in mind. Um, part of the steps are common, such as this one that I'm going through right now, where I'm intersecting points. Um, essentially those are just points of whatever the corner of the field of vision would be if the pilot or co-pilot could turn their head what you have to, we're making the extremities of the vision that they could see out of the cockpit. And I'm creating parallel curves which are offset by zero so they're still along the edge there. Again these are this is just the extremities of the things they could see outside of the windscreen. Now I'm creating a the nominal point of view point for the pilot. And this is, I say nominal because I mean the average height. So if you have a seat that's adjustable, the pilot would want to adjust their seat such that their eyes are at this point. Um, and if you don't have adjustable seats, then <laughs> the average pilot would be at this position. And the field of view we're constructing here is different from the stock field of views you can create in Katia, in that this is everything they could see if they were to swivel their head about this point. As opposed to just your standard central focus of vision and your peripheral vision. From this point, we're going to, now this is, uh, we're going to create lines through the points that we created earlier. I believe that you want to do this for both of the methods shown, the good and the bad, um, but maybe you want to watch the entire video before you start constructing things. This you certainly want to do. Um, this is because you have a different edge to the field of view than the windscreen there because the, the instrument panel cover is more restricted than the windscreen. Now we're going to sweep each of our extremities of the windscreen along our, guide, our guidelines here. And you can kind of get the general general idea what is going on. Once we sweep all of these, you'll be able to see what's inside the sweeps. Now, obviously, part of this, that whole the latest sweep, um, shares area with the instrument panel so we want to cut this so it's its own unique section and there's a point called anchor points in the box there it then sometimes it automatically fills them in sometimes it doesn't if it doesn't just click on your two points that you created on either edges of the sweeping curve So here what this shows is that the instrument panel is not at the optimal angle for not restricting the field of vision. So you might want to change the uh, angle on that a little bit, but really it's minimal. Now here's where one of the problems comes in with this method of sweeping the surfaces is that this top surface, you can't sweep it, it doesn't like it for whatever reason. I couldn't find a way to get it to work. So but anyway, anyway, carrying on with the idea, I'm going to try and do it as two separate pieces first. 
and that's still not going to work. But just to show you. And I have no idea what that error means. So, so we're going to, anyway, continuing on, we want to create a sphere, which is what we would cut all these, these vision planes with. Now this is where um, I have stopped with the idea of cutting the original planes with the sphere, and instead I, okay, I take that back, I am cutting the original planes with the sphere. And this plane, never mind. So to emphasize this is still the bad method. Because we have this problem here. Things like this just happen to show up with the way that we did it. And I'm not sure why. So just, that's the problem. I'm not sure why. <laughs> so it's a, not the best method to use. Unless perhaps you know. Um, and then the comment on the top section, you notice that I got a curve there. I did that by projecting normal to the surface. I took the guide curve that is actually on the windscreen and projected it normal to the sphere which is one of the drop-down options in the projection tool. So projection, this is the intersection. But pro intersection again. <laughs> and I'm just going to show one more problem that occurs when you do it this way. When you do the intersections instead of just projecting the original shape onto the sphere is when you go to join all these lines you get a discontinuity and I think that this just might have to do with the matter of scale and that we're, these things are so far away and since we're projecting them at radial angles or yeah, extruding them at radial angles any minor difference in tolerance that Katia is using at the down close gets really expanded. So here's the good way to do it. You take your initial guide curves and then join them all together, project them normal to the sphere. And you can do the same thing for the little sphere. Project them normal, as you can see in the top option. And then cut the sphere with that new projection onto it. So we have RoboCop down here. So we have the sphere that's right next to our face and then far away. And then we can connect these two sections of the sphere with some fills along our guidelines. And that'll give us our whole field of view. And I apologize for the speed of the video. You have to get along within 15 minutes to be on YouTube. So I uh, just pause it as you go along to see the finer details of the video. Here I'm disassembling the lines because I'm going to use them as fill edges or uh, multi section surface edges. So each individual piece I disassemble using that tool that is underneath the join tool to use the drop down arrow. And then we're using a multi-section surface with guide curves. The guide curves are our field of view lines. And these things on the Robocop lens, as well as the big sphere, are our cross sections. You don't even necessarily have to add the guides. Here, yeah, it works just fine, so the guides are pointless, essentially. You don't even have to make them for this method. So 
so which is why I recommended watching the whole video first. This is a lot easier, as in it's a lot faster, and it's a lot better quality than the previous method that I showed. So some of the pieces got broken even farther for whatever reason, but it seems to work just fine. So now we have our big cheese wheel of representing the field of view. And we'll join all the sections together. And then we're going to add some color to it and transparency so we can see what's going on. And I missed a few panels, it looks like, when I was making them transparent. I'll fix that in a second. After I organize the tree. So you can see when I have the transparency up, there are some panels that are not transparent. And the rendering, I'm just showing what you would see. And I think we would like to see more, so we'll then end up turning up the transparency later. But right now. Two hundred. Yeah. Okay. And then we missed this section of the join here and that section. So going back into the join, add mode, click on the whatever it is, and then hit OK. And maybe a little less transparency. That's pretty transparent. Okay, and then add some color for style points. Uh, no, not red. No, not red. Ah, uh, yellow or blue. Okay, blue. Beautiful. How soothing, right? So that's the pilot field of view. Now we can reflect this over the XC plane. It's the X plane, as Katia likes to call it, because they're backward. Um, and. We'll add it. the co-pilot field of view, that's what it is. We'll add a different color to it, yellow, so you can tell the difference. Set it to the same transparency, 150. There we go. So that's how you create a custom field of view sphere for the pilots.